um, so we are live. Yes. Good evening. Welcome to iFocus Lecture 107. Today is the 11th in the Glaucoma module. And uh, we welcome Dr. Anil K. Mandal, who is the faculty at Telvi Prasada Institute with passion on uh, congenital glaucoma, who is here to speak to us on that topic. Vanita will introduce him and then Dr. Anil will start his lecture. Yes. And Vanita, can you please introduce Dr. Mandal? Yeah, just a second. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Um, team Center for Sight welcomes Dr. Anil K. Mandal, who, as Dr. Santosh Munawar said, is synonymous with um, the management of primary congenital glaucoma. He uh, completed his MBBS in Kolkata, and then he um, did his ophthalmology at Ames, did his senior residentship there, and did a few of, uh, visiting of, um, research fellowships in the US, uh, mm -hmm. namely at the Kellogg Eye Center at uh, Michigan and the Doheny Eye Institute in LA. He has been very much part of LVPEI team from the very beginning. Uh, and um, on the way, he has won several national and international awards. The, Possibly the most notable of all is the uh, Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. Give the, he was the first ophthalmologist to receive it. And this was in the year 2003. Um, he he um, has also been elected the uh, fellow of the National Academy of Medical Sciences for his contribution to um, the sciences and ophthalmology. He has of course published extensively in his field of interest and has also contributed, been co-authors, several books. Uh, Dr. Mandal, we welcome you to our PG program. Uh, as you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, like a marathon uh, sessions where um, not only do they attend live, the PG trainees, but they also have the opportunity to access all these lectures in their own time, whenever possible. Welcome, Dr. Mandal. All right. Uh, thank you, Vanita. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be uh, uh, presenting uh, my talk uh, related to congenital glaucoma. I'm very happy to say, uh, see um, Dr. Harsh Kumar, Santosh, uh, Pratip, uh, uh, all of you. Uh, you know, uh, I'll say this uh, presentation will be uh, very informal very interactive. I have divided the presentation in two parts. Part one related to diagnostic evaluation and differential diagnosis of primary congenital glaucoma. And part two uh, will be related to uh, surgery, uh, short and long-term outcomes, uh, etc. So let me uh, start. So part one, the basic uh, learning objectives are to understand the classic features of primary congenital glaucoma, evaluation of pediatric glaucoma, and differential diagnosis of primary congenital glaucoma. Here you see a picture. Some of you, uh, particularly Pratip, during uh, his uh, fellowship here in LB Prasad must have seen this photograph when it was clicked in the beginning of my career at LB Prasad Eye Institute very advanced stage of primary congenital glaucoma. You can see here corneal diameter, a newborn baby uh, brought within a week of birth, very advanced uh, you know, enlargement of the corneal diameter, hazy cornea on evaluation, high intraocular pressure, and uh, diagnosis was primary congenital glaucoma, very advanced. Now developmental glaucoma, may be associated, is usually associated with developmental anomalies of the eye that are present at birth. Now, types, if the dysgenesis of the angle involves the trabecular meshwork only, we call it 
isolated trabecular dysgenesis, which is the hallmark of primary congenital glaucoma. Now, in addition to isolated trabecular dysgenesis, in a particular patient, there may be associated irido dysgenesis and corneo dysgenesis in various proportions, and a particular patient may present with an advanced stage of glaucoma called, um, you know, secondary developmental glaucoma. The classic type for primary congenital glaucoma is written here, epiphora, photophobia, and blepharospasm. Very well publicized, very well documented in several, in all the textbooks and the journals. This may be the opening sentence of any publication, classic type. Now, here is a patient, uh, you see, we operated um, bar and is the follow-up picture was taken. When we diagnose evaluation, the initial examination will be in the uh, out. without subjecting the child to anesthesia, that's very important. Torchlight examination of the eye uh, you know, plus clue to not be else, even though presentation is confusing. So in most of the patients, before really we take any decision for surgical, in this surgical disease, primary congenital glaucoma, we will have to establish the diagnosis, rule out the disease, before we take any decision for surgical intervention. Now, initial office examination, we must into the degree of photophobia, blepharospasm, and tearing. And children who are, are five or six years of age, with some training, we can really examine um, the children as young as children in the sleep lab. That's the important. And in children five years or above, uh, uh, we cooperate for application in the BD. Now, next we have read that, you know, my sensitive for setting uh, the we can gain more information about the IGC. We really know. Uh, uh, that safe post patient for examination or anesthesia in the minor room and the uh, equipment needed for evaluation under anesthesia. I think he's, he's, he's disconnected. Yeah, he got disconnected. Yeah, otherwise, also his voice is breaking. I think his connection is. I believe that I believe there was a problem with the connection. Vanita, ma'am, in the during in the meantime, would you like to take your quiz now? Uh, do you want me to? Because he don't. I think, don't I think it's better to wait a little bit. He yeah, yeah. Joining. That'll look very strange, you know. Just. Yeah. We can wait, I think, uh, I, we can wait for two, three, four minutes. And meanwhile, uh, Vanita can check orally some questions from the hot seaters till about mm -hmm. what he is still taught, something like that. <laughs> I don't know the name of the hot seaters today, Radhika. 
Uh, yeah, ma'am. So that's Tanme. Uh, They're the same always. So <laughs> me, Abhinav, Sanjana, Ajiba. Yeah. Okay. So you start with Tanme. If nobody knows anything, then you ask Sanjana. <laughs> Not a call. <laughs> Please don't, don't, don't be so demoralizing for the others. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. No. Hi, Tanme. You there? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah, hi. Good evening. So, what I really wanted to know is that he he said that there were a few the differential diagnoses of uh, an appearance like that at birth. First of all, describe that appearance. How would you de describe it? What he showed that newborn baby? Ma'am, in newborn babies, uh, there will be uh, the eye will be uh, looking proptosed, and uh, the cornea uh -huh. will be enlarged and. Uh, there will be uh, tearing and... How can you say proptosis? Tell me that now. Ma'am... How, uh, how, how do you actually e evaluate proptosis? That's usually in the sitting condition, isn't it? You, it's supine condition, it's not possible. So basically, yes. a prominent eyeball is something you can say. Yes, ma'am. Whether it's proptosed or not is, is debatable. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm. And proptosis is, and, is, is a term which is used for something that is pushing the eyeball. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's back here. Yeah, he's back. Yeah. We give him the space. We'll carry on the conversation later. Sunilji, could you help uh, unmute Sir's so uh, audio, please? Maybe he can shut off his video so that uh, bandwidth is better. So, so is he... Mandal, um, muted. Vidya, you can shut off his video so that bandwidth is better. Otherwise, uh, you're not able to hear him properly. <laughs> yes. So the instrument list of instruments are listed here. As we uh, proceed... Yeah, you have to share your uh, screen. Uh, Dr. Mandal, you have to share your screen. Yeah, you create a hot spot for him. Yeah. Sunilji, can you put off the video for Dr. Mandal so that bandwidth is better? Uh, Sunilji, can, Pratim, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes we can. Yeah, yeah. Pratim, yeah. Can you hear? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. Perfectly fine. I have, uh, I have for me. Still here. Why is this? So let uh, me uh, proceed. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, please proceed. The external elimination. The findings. Yes. The epiphora, bioraspasm, and photophobia may be related to several like genital nasolacrimal inflammation that is carried to VIT vital infection, or epithelial defect, foreign body, trichiasis, etc. So we'll have to a patient every all. All children of congenital glaucoma, including syndromic glaucoma. Like, things are good. Hold it. 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 Hold
Dr. Soni, can you please put your uh, uh, audio on mute? Thank you. Anil, sir, your audio is mute, sir. Okay, is the slide visible? So you need to share your screen once again because it got disconnected in between. Is the uh, slide yes, seen? Yes, sir. You can uh, make it slide show, sir. Yeah, perfectly fine, sir. All right, fine. So, uh, a differential diagnosis well in textbook and in journals uh, sclerocornea, tears in the desmet brain, congenital cord ulcer, metabolic disease, Peter's anomaly, endothelial dystrophy, and dermoid. But, quite an important differential diagnosis. Tears in the desmet brain uh, is uh, not really uh, in birth trauma, is not uh, very typical uh, as we see in congenital glaucoma. I'll come to it in the picture. It is usually unilateral. Uh, usually it involves the left side because of left occiput anterior position of the uh, head and naturally left eye is more vulnerable for the injury and it can give rise to Here is the situation. Picture you can see the child was sent to us uh, uh, in the LV Prasad Eye Institute after two hours of birth. There was uh, uh, forceps delivery. The note was uh, by the obstetrician that the child is having unilateral congenital glaucoma as come for uh, uh, sending for uh, management surgery. Actually, it was for giving rise to uh, corneal clouding, and uh, you can see when we did the evaluation under anesthesia, we noted diffuse corneal edema, which is more in the center, and and definitely of forceps application. With that, other findings, associated findings. There is subconjunctival hemorrhage or diagnosis is not congenital glaucoma, it is congenital heart um, storm. So we put the patient on weak steroid tapering doses for about uh, four weeks. And after four weeks, uh, we took this photograph. You can see here. Now, here is a situation. Because this vertical uh, scar is bisecting, is going through the pupillary axis, it is usually associated with amblyopia and uh, some amount of uh, astigmatism, uh, sometimes very severe astigmatism. Have really do proper uh, and amblyopia therapy, otherwise vision will be reduced. Simultaneous bilateral affliction, both the eyes are afflicted of this style. Ground glass appears in normal computer normal intraocular pressure and gonio anomaly wise on gonioscopy there was no gonio anomaly what the diagnosis of almost straight the action of the cord thick so you can see here cornea is thicker sometimes corneal thickness uh, becomes uh, two to three times than the normal corneal thickness so here the diagnosis is congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy, which is a very important differential diagnosis of primary congenital From that, we are coming to a child, uh, a syndromic glaucoma with, uh, you know, corneal haze and sometimes associated with glaucoma. Again, the syndromic features will clinch the diagnosis. But if glaucoma is associated, uh, you know, proper management must be done. 
conditions associated with corneal enlargement may be uh, typical corneal problem uh, is here, seen here in the photograph, half stripe, double contoured line, and mild haze in between. This is a patient uh, who was treated and to come back, you can see the middle of the uh, distance membrane tear because of perhaps try is actually here is a uh, phase of uh, this photograph you can see the pi here uh, early phase of uh, uh, operative period when the corneal is in the branching pattern double contoured line corneal enlargement uh, should be measured uh, white to white horizontal corneal diameter is important because of the very obvious fact that conjunctival insertion in the upper quadrant it overlaps upper part of 0.5 millimeter of the cornea that's why so corneal assessment should uh, be done in the form of enlargement that is corneal diameter corneal clarity and uh, <clears throat> Microscopic evaluation or evaluation under microscope not any subtle changes in the epithelium or other. Enlargement of the cornea at birth or within, uh, I'll say, uh, six months to one year of birth, if the corneal diameter is more than 12 millimeter in otherwise suspected, it is very um, uh, highly likely that it is because of enlargement due to congenital corneal uh, which is uh, in this uh, situation will be con uh, congenital glaucoma. Now, corneal enlargement before the three years of age, it happens after three years of age, corneal diameter usually isn't any much, but it to give you a disc damage in ocular pressure is high. It's formable until the age of 10 years. Now, we have diameter up to 17, 18 millimeters uh, in very advantage of congenital glaucoma. Now, uh, if the corneal clad part will have to do a refraction and uh, associated is uh, myopia and compound myopic astigmatism is the uh, most common situation, is the rule almost. Now, what refractive error we get uh, by diffusion under anesthesia, the magnitude is usually uh, not the same, it is usually less compared to whatever is expected out of axial length. Now, uh, that is because the uh, uh, natural thing happens in a particular case, the uh, flattening of the cornea, decrease in length thickness, deep anterior chamber with relative posterior positioning of the lens. All these important factors actually leads to negate the fact of myopia. It really uh, contributes to lessening the degree of myopia uh, if we consider the myopia which is uh, expected out of enlargement of on the axial length. Tonometry is one of the most important parameters for uh, evacuating the congenital glaucoma under anesthesia, pediatric glaucoma under Now, is in central applanation tonometer. Now, several anesthetic agents can alter the uh, uh, intraocular pressure and uh, it's very well, uh, written in the textbook. I'm not going into the details. So, however, I must say that as soon as the excitement phase of anesthesia is over, the child is calm and quiet in the very early stage of anesthesia before intubation in blood pressure. Otherwise, the intubation and prolonged Anesthesia, a few minutes of anesthesia, there may be drastic fall of intraocular pressure, which may be confusing. Here is a patient where 
Perkins held an applanation handheld applanation tonometer is used to measure the intraocular pressure. Now, slit lamp evaluation or it must be done very carefully. Um, portable handheld slit lamp uh, um, or binocular operating microscope is uh, good. Corneal examination should be done and uh, the findings should be uh, noted. Gonioscopy should be done in each and every patient. Unfortunately, the type of cases we see in India, sometimes the corneal uh, edema or corneal uh, clarity may be so impaired that gonioscopy does not just give or yield any information extra. But in mild form or where only megalocornea with reasonably clear cornea, it is possible uh, that uh, gonioscopy uh, will give uh, important information and which is really, uh, I'll say, very uh, diagnostic of particular type of congenital glaucoma. In isolated primary congenital glaucoma, flat insertion of the iris root at the trabecular meshwork is the hallmark. Flat iris insertion, insertion may be uh, concave or wraparound insertion, which a picture is seen in the textbook, and the surface of the trabecular meshwork sometimes is steeper. And sometimes it may be seen over the trabecular meshwork from the uh, extending from the peripheral iris to the trabecular meshwork. You can see KPA's lens is being used. Uh, and uh, you can see here under higher magnification, uh, gonioscopy, uh, direct gonioscopy is allowing you to visualize the angle of the anterior chamber. Here is the picture seen in a patient of typical primary congenital glaucoma. Ophthalmoscopy, again, uh, is an in integral part, but again, preoperatively, because of corneal edema or the media opacity, uh, uh, yeah, ophthalmoscopy may not yield much information in a particular patient. The very nature of the disease is severe in our uh, country. I'll come to it later on, as we'll, as we'll discuss with the surgical management. If uh, disc evaluation is possible, uh, cup to disc ratio and other parameters as we see in adult must be noted. But one important thing is that the cup to disc ratio in children because of glaucoma is very quickly altered uh, within short span of time in few weeks to few months if not treated properly. And in general, cup disc ratio in children 0.3 or more an asymmetry more than 0.2 is very um, uh, suspicious and we must carefully evaluate. Careful drawing is important. Photographs must be taken to compare uh, uh, from time to time. Ultrasonography is an integral part again, just to uh, see what is the structure in the posterior segment. A very important information out of ultrasonography must be uh, obtained is, is there any uh, tumor or any other uh, mass lesion in the posterior segment we are missing and which may be mimicking primary congenital glaucoma. We have seen several children where uh, primary congenital glaucoma like appearance, very typical of enlargement, corneal edema and uh, uh, photophobia, uh, tearing, blepharospasm, but on ultrasound or even torch light examination or examination with the uh, microscope will give us that there is altered glow from the fundus and uh, on evaluation with ultrasound we may discover or we may realize that it is because of uh, intraocular tumor most commonly a common tumor in children is retinoblastoma or any other uh, tumor if it is there it must be ruled out so this enlargement of uh, axial length is very typical of primary congenital glaucoma. It helps us in uh, prognosticating a patient uh, dependent on the degree of axial length enlargement. Now, it helps in the diagnosis as well as in prognosis and in follow-up of patients with pediatric glaucoma. Now, once we uh, come across the findings 
and uh, collate the findings, uh, we'll be able to come to the conclusion on what the diagnosis is or what the findings of our evaluation is leading uh, to or what diagnosis is. A typical finding may be there in different situation. Whenever we see the things are confusing, better not to take any decision immediately. It's a good idea to do uh, repeat evaluation and maybe in suspicious cases where pressure is on the borderline higher side to subject the patient on uh, topical anti medication and repeat evaluation before we really take surgical decision. The factors influencing the therapeutic decisions are listed here. The structural defect, the age, the corneal clarity, diameter, severity of glaucoma, and systemic condition. Is it related to any syndrome? Now, syndromic glaucoma is a huge chapter, and uh, the decision for surgery has to be taken very carefully. I'm not going into that, but I'm going into primary congenital glaucoma hallmark is isolated trabecular dysgenesis. And it's very uh, responsive to primary treatment uh, surgically with goniotomy or trabeculotomy ab externo. We'll come to it later on in the, the second part of my presentation. Whenever we come across irido trabecular dysgenesis, we'll have to really evaluate more carefully and in the communicating, uh, in the communication to the parents or the family members, we'll have to be very careful that we are dealing with uh, a very, uh, a more difficult form of pediatric glaucoma or congenital glaucoma, where, you know, the response to surgery may not be as good as we achieve in primary congenital glaucoma. Iris abnormality should be uh, looked very carefully. And in such situations, sometimes uh, first surgery may not yield complete success. Sometimes multiple surgery is a... Here is a picture. This picture was taken from survey of thalmology. Um, step ladder classification of uh, glaucoma. Iridocorneotrabecular dysgenesis. Look at the multiple abnormality. You can see here corneal opacity, corneal problem, uh, defective uh, desmets membrane, corneal thickness is irregular, iris strands breathing from the colorate to the uh, margin of the strand, uh, in the abnormality in the angle, prominent uh, swall base line, and also cataract. So all these things gives rise to a conclusion that we are dealing with a more severe form of congenital glaucoma, predictive glaucoma, and we should be very careful. And in the evaluation process, all the findings should be noted very carefully and wherever possible should be photographed and documented. Children under three years of age, I'll say, early surgery is required, prompt surgical intervention is required. If a patient is having megalocornea, clear cornea, gonio anomaly typical of glaucoma, but this change is not very advanced. Corneal diameter is in the borderline enlargement, say 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter. I'll say uh, rather than jumping into the surgical decision, one can decide for starting anti-glaucoma medication and response to uh, that medical treatment. However, if somebody feels that uh, bilateral involvement, typical of primary, uh, late onset primary developmental glaucoma, primary congenital glaucoma, it's better again to go for surgical intervention. Corneal clarity, the, you know, we were talking about goniotomy, the typical surgical technique described first for the surgical treatment of congenital glaucoma uh, in the uh, late uh, 1930s by Barkan, goniotomy. But unfortunately, this particular technique, even though very elegant technique, 
very popular technique is not applicable in our patient population, probably 70 to 80% of the cases or even more. And that's the reason an alternative surgical technique, trabeculotomy ab externo is uh, required. I'll come to it later on as we come to the second part of my presentation. Corneal diameter, if it is severely enlarged, according to Barkan's publication, he himself believed that his surgical technique of goniotomy should not be attempted even when the corneal clarity otherwise permits the technique. Very fact that limbal distortion is so much that if you do goniotomy, probably you will not be able to do a scientific job and you may perforate the globe in a very advanced stage of um, uh, congenital, primary congenital glaucoma with hugely or enlarged corneal diameter. That's the reason alternative technique goniotomy and in our uh, setup in India, probably the most common surgical technique we do in primary congenital glaucoma in the moderate to advanced stage of the disease is ab external and trabeculectomy. The procedure which was popularized, uh, I'll say practiced by Professor N.M. in All India Institute of Medical Sciences uh, and published uh, in the early 80s, 1980s, several publications related to uh, surgical technique, uh, presentation, and surgical outcome. We'll come to it, the surgical technique. I am uh, grateful to Professor who have had the opportunity to assist him uh, more than 100 cases in my three years of uh, senior residency in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, where uh, we used to work uh, with my senior, uh, Dr. Harsh Kumar, uh, and uh, uh, we, we, uh, ch I cherish uh, this uh, memory, uh, and uh, it is nice that we are talking about this uh, surgical technique. Uh, severity of glaucoma in the advanced stage, as we told from primary combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy. So here is the end of my uh, talk in the uh, the first part of my shooting uh, for discussion or go for the surgical clinical end. Avanita? We haven't and received any questions yet. Please go ahead with the second part and we'll come to the questions at the end. Oh. Uh, I proceed with the uh, part two of, part, part yes, two of the presentation yes. and uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, discuss at the end. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what we are uh, talking in the uh, second part now onwards is the surgical technique. The options available are many. We will uh, try to figure out the options available to us and surgical technique which is best suited for Indian patient population and we'll see surgical results. Now, in the diagnosis investigation uh, has really improved outcome. Primary congenital glaucoma or true congenital glaucoma where the disease is presenting at birth or within one month of birth. That is the definition of glaucoma. Primary congenital glaucoma, true congenital onset. The moment uh, the comes after uh, one month of birth in a uh, few months to uh, two years, we call it infantile onset glaucoma, where uh, it is relatively uh, late onset, but in two years. That group of patient actually uh, enjoys the best surgical outcome through infantile onset glaucoma. And juvenile onset, we call it after after two years, we used to read uh, three years, but the uh, uh, meeting uh, consists uh, us that should uh, the years of uh, juvenile onset glaucoma, where the process is relatively poorer. Now, in congenital onset glaucoma, the onset available goniotomy, trabeculotomy, abexta, trabeculotomy, Primary combined trabeculotomy or trabeculotomy 
and uh, fiber optic microcatheter trabeculotomy uh, is the improvement for it. This has become a very popular technique. Most of the surgeons uh, in European and uh, in the in, uh, Western countries perform this. The problem in our situation setup is the availability of the microcatheter and the cost of the therapy. Microscopic goniotomy was tried, but it's not, it has not become very popular. The other recent advances is Kahuk double bed when we do uh, angle surgery. Instead of just thing we, we used to do uh, the technique in, in removing a strip of trabecular meshwar, complicating the anterior chamber with the slime canal. That's the thing. What happens in neotomy is a little like knife is uh, introduced to the anterior chamber under a mass control with the help of a goniopism, uh, surgical prism, and you see the and you inside part of the circular meshwar, and this is a visible tool without any sensation. The moment you get the sensation, you actually you have perforated the globe. Here is the clue you are seeing that you are seeing the superficial the root of iris is falling back. It's an art as well as a science. Otto Bargan described technique in 1936 for primary open angle glaucoma. Later on, he uh, introduced congenital glaucoma. Uh, I'll say 19, 1940 onwards, that became the only surgical technique in 1960 when trabeculotomy was this. Uh, this was the technique for 20 years. This was the only technique in 1940 to 1960. And as I was telling, this is the diagrammatic vision. Textbook, and you can see here with the help of the gonopism incision is being given. I have several surgeons doing it. I have never done it. I will add simultaneously and independently tried by and Smith and and, um, uh, and from uh, Redmond Smith from London who from uh, described in the year 1960. Smith published his paper in British Journal. Burian and Allen published uh, their article in Europe. Um, so. Uh, I'll come to the surgical technique on the advantages. Trabeculotomy ab externo has several advantages over the alternative technique of anatomically more size, technically easier, no need to add to the thing of uh, Access rate is supposed to be better. And most important thing, as the surgeon is doing with the binocular light scope, they can have the similar view quality wise and can be technically It is very easy to learn and easy to teach compared to goniotomy. Uh, goniotomy, you'll have to see video and surgeon doing, and actually, you do your uh, surgery in the initial phase under guidance, but whatever you are doing is the best seen by you yourself. So that's the uh, advantage. What do you call my trabeculotomy? Till out it is, this technique of prime combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy was not very popular in the US, European, uh, and uh, the medicine population and population. With continued publication from India, this technique has now been established very well established, very respected. In the early 90s, when we used to present our course in American Academy, people, uh, excellent surgeons who are otherwise comfortable to me, to criticize this technique very badly. But some of them who worked in Saudi Arabia or other um, countries where phenotypic uh, uh, I'll say appearance is so difficult. This is the technique and the pattern.
it is definitely better than goniotomy because the trabeculotomy part does be done by goniotomy and trabeculotomy by the episcleral venous system as the dual mechanism helps us in controlling the intraocular pressure in the long run better let me explain this surgical technique under anesthesia when you are doing surgery superior rectus is and you are infrared you give and see and about six millimeter from the limbus based congenital flap and episcleral blood should be cauterized with the help of a triangular scleral incision superficial incision must be given the base of the uh, uh, will be approximately 4 to 5 feet. now this incision should be given i used to give with the help of 11 number blade the bart parker blade in ophthalmic eyes one should be very careful and compared to adult this incision should be relatively deeper as we want the scleral relatively thicker compared to adult collection so that the the limbal region will be better uh, L -M -A -M -A -M -A seen, better uh, identifiable. So, under a limbus based partial thinness tabular scleral flap, an animal region should be carefully identified. You start from a limbus towards the posterior aspect, uh, towards the sclera, a big gray zone will be seen and behind it will be white zone. Now the junction between the bluish gray zone and white zone is the external spar and the most landmark for the slams canal. Now in usually ophthalmic eyes, you will have to go a sclerolimbal junction because the slams canal position is instead posterior under a higher unification a gradual deepening incision is given to cut the size superficial of the M's canal that, that positioning wall is seen and that's the end and they see the use of aquas if you get the bit of aquas from the anterior chamber that means you have incised the inner wall, which is an unintentional but accidental lining. Actually, you have in the anterior. You do not want that. Typically, it is said that slim canal location or skeletal part location is where white meets the blue slim Sorry. So that is the uh, classic statement. And uh, once that is done, arch trabecular tone or trabecular tone is the instrument, the lower prong is introduced and upper one acts as a guide. Now, it is introduced into the uh, surgeon's uh, view, wise, surgeon's left of the radial incision, and that is the step. And with higher magnification, and then you reduce the magnification while really rotating the probe or the trabecular dome so that prong ruptures the uh, inner wall of the slam canal create a continuity between this segment of the slam canal and the anterior chamber. So at this stage, distance will be felt. Too much of resistance indicate that you're creating a false passage and no resistance indicate that you probably have perforated the um, uh, inner wall and channel that is clavicular meshwar, you probably have the entire chain. That's the reason for re resistance. Once done, the similar thing is the other uh, side real incision. When it's done in each side, approximately 100. 120 degree of the trabecular mesh work is taken care of, of trabecular.
compared to that when somebody does cystic degree caviculotum you are having access uh, to slims canal aqueous direct access to the slims canal all all advantage uh, and surgical technique by that's a definite improvement now once the tablet uh the cavi party operation should be done the mark which is given 3 by 2 mm or 3 by 1 mm part of the tissue limbal tissue is removed as we do in cavicleectomy then the idectomy is done idectomy should be in a way that you hold up the eye and out and in the instrument Position of this is you do. If the position is in this way, you will get a over aridectum. Aridectum, after aridectum, broad aridectum. We base at the at the base it is wider and gradual aridectum. Beautiful aridectum will be done as you can see. Uh, I am in later on. Partial scleral flap is closed by the tenodon. Which is the apex? One on each. After ten years of my, my work, because I do not believe in using mitomycin or five FU in primary study in children, I tried avoiding these two sutures. The closure is one suture, and that after my few hundred of trabeculectomy, we are only adult single trabeculectomy. I switched over the children uh, in the uh, at the end of ten years of initial. So it's possible, and it is conjunctival suturing is for pectoral suturing will be between eight to five pectoral and. This is the. Type of view. The reason is more filtration. If shallow chamber, iris may come or and may be internal of the med. That is the reason we learned that the base of the aridectomy should be equal or even slightly larger than the base of the open uh, ostium you created. So I am not going into the post-operative uh, in detail. Antibiotic for one week, topical steroid tapering doses for six weeks, and topical cycloplasic, usually cyclopentolate, or sometimes uh, we use homoid also. Now this is the clinical appearance of the uh, blab at the end of uh, one year, and you can see uh, this is the typical iridectomy. This notch is probably re uh, related to iridectomy, whatever. My micro trauma was created at the jonules has given rise to this little, little notch, and you can see the habstai in this particular situation crossing below the pupillary uh, margin, which is good. But this gives a significant astigmatism. Now I am playing this video. I don't know whether that video will be. Is the is the video seen? Yes, sir. The video is seen, sir. All right. Playing so that's great. Now, what I told you can see carefully. This I have uh, changed the diameter of the sharp edge. Once incision is given, I am doing with the sharp edge of the uh, eleven number blade up so that the inner tissue, the trabecular meshwork, will not be uh, incised. You can see here how beautifully the incision. Allowed the trabeculotum into the spot, and the trabeculotum is done. The same thing is done in the other side. Approximately, uh, I'll say seventy, eighty percent of the probe should be entered into the canal and rotated, and then you can see uh, this is the patient. The operative appearance of a patient with a drop, uh, infantile onset only at the age of three months. You can see 
at presentation two months and six months apparent. This photograph was taken at the end of six months. Typical appearance. I'm just uh, uh, presenting this video once again. Uh, how beautifully the edema clears and how quickly at the end of two weeks this photograph was taken this is two months and this is six months so now this is the child we have captured the action of the child at the end of six months of follow-up the child we developed or we communicated to the child Develop the rapport with the child so much. Now you see the behavior or behavior of the child. Looking at my face, and you can see here the child is refusing to go back to the mother. And here, coming after coming to me, not uh, going. By that, now you see the appearance of the child. Nothing. So by by this showing this video, I don't want to uh, convey the message that we are better caretaker than the parents. Parents are parents, but idea of showing this video is to develop the rapport with the child to such an extent the child will feel comfortable and he will be able to really uh, you know communicate and uh, uh, examine the child even without anesthesia. Yet another example, this child again came from a fine morning. Uh, in the night, in the morning, the patient uh, mother uh, saw the, the develop. We operated the very next day, and uh, this is the photograph taken 10 days after operation. Now, the child's video you saw, I was interacting with the child. Here is the child being examined uh, in the OPD at the age of eight years. The child is studying fourth standard at that time. This photograph was taken two years ago. Uh, the child used to come for follow-up and uh, um, the child is inspired um, to become a, a doctor. I used to interact with the child. He wants to uh, be a doctor. Now, to be very frank, just I'll take one minute to talk. In my 30 years, I have operated more than 2,500 children and uh, 10 to 12 uh, uh, children are now uh, practicing dentistry. Seven are MBBS doctors and uh, four have done post-graduation. One in uh, psychiatry, one in uh, internal medicine, one in dermatology, and one, one in pediatrics. So that's the uh, situation. It's very encouraging. Four of my operated child are now uh, completed their PhD. Now, I am just uh, concluding uh, in part. I'll take five more minutes. Time is up. Can I take five minutes more, Anita? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, just to talk about the surgical result. This was the first publication about the surgical result from Professor Sooth in 1983 in Indian Journal of Ophthalmology, um, along with Dr. H.C. Agrawal and Dr. Kalra. I, I, I remember Dr. Kalra with utmost, uh, you know, prayer that uh, he is no more. Uh, he worked uh, in congenital glaucoma surgery with Professor Sood, and the 20th of April, he uh, passed away. So anyway, uh, his uh, son did a uh, Cornea Fellowship with us. This is just for information and nothing else. Uh, primary congenital glaucoma in the conclusion of the paper, primary combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy, Professor Sud concluded is safest and most effective in achieving control of IOP in our Indian patient population. Uh, very interesting. 
about 11 years from that publication, British Journal of Ophthalmology, O'Connor, in an editorial, commented that primary combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy may represent the next step in the search for the best surgical treatment in congenital glaucoma. Till then, actually, congenital glaucoma surgery in the form of combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy was not really approved or really practiced by many surgeons in European country and uh, in um, Western country. So uh, after that, it, it has now come in the textbook. So many people are now practicing, particularly in difficult situation. We published our initial 15 years of result, 360 uh, um, children, consecutive children, and uh, 624 eyes. We concluded that prolonged IP control can be achieved, and 42% of the patient gain normal visual acuity. I am presenting this uh, uh, extended series: 1128 eyes of 653 children operated over a period of 21 years uh, by me. Uh, the results will be shown here. You can see the success rate has decreased over a period of time. This is the success, uh, complete success without any anti-glaucoma medication. 90% at second year decreased to 70% at the age of 10th year. Most of the patients who are not controlled required anti-glaucoma medication. Best spectacles uh, corrected visual acuity was available in 51% and 27% gained normal visual acuity. You can see where we did surgery, primary surgery, did better compared to a small group where we did the second surgery. And you can see here patients who had clear cornea did better compared to people or the children who had corneal edema and corneal scar at presentation. Children who had two congenital onset glaucoma did relatively poorer compared to infantile and juvenile onset glaucoma. So it is the two congenital onset glaucoma where prognosis is relatively uh, you know, poor. Here is the situation, actually the same child we operated for acute high drop. This is the six months post-operative appearance. So I'll give uh, uh, three, four more examples in slide. This child was done at the end of uh, third week. Simultaneous bilateral surgery was done. Combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy, we call it CTT. And here is the situation, six months post-operative appearance. Three years post-operative appearance. Uh, so the child is requiring spectacle correction for myopia and enjoying age appropriate normal visual acuity. This is the youngest age I operated at the third day of birth. Within a week of birth, we have operated several hundred. And uh, you can see simultaneous bilateral uh, affliction, simultaneous bilateral surgery, six months post-operative appearance showing clear cornea. And you can see the success rate. Uh, it was published in um, ophthalmology. Uh, two weeks is this surgery was done again, simultaneous bilateral surgery. Here, corneal diameter was not very enlarged, but corneal edema was there. We operated and corneal edema cleared. It took a little longer time to clear, but it cleared totally. We are on the impression that the child may require keratoplasty. Fortunately, keratoplasty was not required. And the child is completing here 12 years of follow-up. And here is the child seen 25 years. He completed journalism uh, from uh, Bengal and is doing job. And uh, yet another example, the last example, round about the same time, we operated this child at the age of two uh, weeks, again from Bengal. Here is the child seen 25 years post-operative. This photograph was taken actually two years ago when I examined the child in um, uh, child uh, with Dr. Uh, Devasis. Uh, in uh, Calcutta uh, Medical Research Institute when he was working there a few years ago. Now he's in uh, Center for Sight. I used to see uh, patients when I go to uh, Bengal uh, along with Devasis 
most of the patients are getting follow up uh, in uh, um, the setup uh, devices is working now center for site so uh, any question now i conclude my uh, presentation uh, here uh, any question any uh, any clarification any any comments Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Mandal. Thank you for sharing your uh, immense experience, years of experience in primary congenital glaucoma. There are a few questions from the uh, postgraduate trainee point of view. And one of, I think the burning question is, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, related to the surgery itself. But I will allow our chair, Dr. Harsh, and co-chair, Dr. Pratip, to first give their impressions. Thank you, Vanita, and uh, what a wonderful talk. I think the beauty is the love with which he handles, and he is absolutely a master. There's no question about that. We are proud that he's with us, and I'm proud that I've worked with him. Uh, uh, just uh, one or two things I want Dr. to... Dr. Dr. Harsh, uh, I, I am fortunate uh, to be your uh, junior colleague. <laughs> I, enjoyed, and I, I enjoyed your guidance. Okay, we, will, we can keep doing that. So mm -hmm. I think even uh, Santosh is here and uh, we would, uh, we fondly remember our time there. Just one point I want to add uh, that for all the postgraduates, please remember if by any chance you get uh, unilateral uh, buphthalmos or even bilateral, sometimes rarely. Uh, it's not uncommon. I have seen people being operated for congenital glaucoma not having been checked for retinoblastoma. That is one time we can actually save a child. And I have had a number of cases in which trab and trab has been done. Nobody has done an ultrasound. And when you look behind, there is a mask lying behind. So please be very, very careful. Uh, while you are doing this thing, you have to do a good retinal examination. If you can't see the retina properly, please do an ultrasound properly. And the other thing, uh, obviously, Mandar had so much to cover and he was still... So we'll just add on a few things. And one is that obviously till we send the patient to Mandal, we have to put him on medications. Mm -hmm. And so be very, very careful that whenever you give medications in the child, and usually it is beta blockers or carbonic anhydrase inhibitors for that time being, and must teach them punctal occlusion because even one drop of a beta blocker at times can create an asthma or a chain stokes breathing and all that. And the pediatricians or even the parents will never understand what has happened. So be careful about that. I think go ahead, Pratip, please. Wonderful. Ah, Excellent. Namaskar Vandi. <laughs> it was a lovely talk, beautiful talk. You know, it was really uh, wonderful to hear you again. And uh, I enjoyed thoroughly. <laughs> most of the photographs I have seen, most of the patients I have seen. Uh, when I worked with you, and it was, uh, in my uh, early in my early years, uh, you may have assisted, uh, uh, must have assisted a uh, few cases. Yes, at that time, yes, uh, and, uh, the number of cases were less, but I'm sure you must have assisted. Yes, and uh, why you I did remember... not allow him to do any? No, no, no. What about while he was here? Um, you know, actually, I was in the learning phase of my uh, uh, consultancy after doing. Few cases uh, surgically, uh, surgical cases in All India Institute under guidance, uh, Dr. Sood, uh, Dr. Haris Agrawal. Yeah, but I think the best way to learn is to give it to someone else to do and manage yes, the complication. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> anyway, can I just I move on because we are short of time? There are a few things that I would like to ask you. You said uh, B scan. Of course, a B scan is very important, not only to rule out a tumor, uh, you know. Um, in the posterior segment, but also to check for the axial length, which yes, is yes. a good indicator. Of course, it's not very precise with a B scan. Uh, is a good indicator that uh, the eyeball is enlarging. So you said an axial length of seventeen point five to twenty, uh, which I thought was a little bit long, don't you think? Sixteen to eighteen at birth is probably the, the normal axial length. Yes, uh, you know, uh, I quoted probably the uh, Western figure, uh, that's the thing, in Indian situation. This is uh, a you know, published uh, report in India, uh, so yes, yeah. Yes. And um, uh, you showed us a surgery in clear cornea. You did trab and trap. 
Whereas, you know, goniotomy would have sufficed. It's lesser invasive, safer surgery. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I feel that uh, wherever surgeon is competent in uh, technique-wise, technology-wise, can perform goniotomy, can do uh, when the corneal clarity permit. The question is uh, uh, understanding uh, goniotomy is easy, reading is easy. The question is it takes little more time to really become expert in goniotomy compared to external trabeculotomy. What I was telling is, it is external trabeculotomy, which is relatively easier to teach, easier to learn, compared to goniotomy. Goniotomy, uh, it's an art and it's a an science. There is science behind the art. Probably it takes little more time to get expert. That's the idea I wanted to uh, convey. With these nothing, posts... nothing against goniotomy. It's a very uh, excellent technique. And uh, particularly with the uh, microscope, good microscope, good, uh, um, you know, surgical gonioprism, gonioprism has become uh, uh, safer. See, with the newer uh, techniques now coming, and they surely will come to India at some time, mostly angle surgery uh, is being uh, advocated. And, you know, there might come a time in India also where the paradigm will change, where we will not be just treating very advanced glaucoma. We might might be uh, treating people who want uh, surgery earlier on in the disease. But that's beside the point. They, you know, learning uh, intraoperative um, gonioscopy is also something that uh, I feel this generation and perhaps the next generation of postgraduate trainees uh, should be exposed to. Yeah, so should be should should learn. Uh, yes, and then uh, uh, you know uh, I've given that photograph. This is you know I always give my own patients own patients photographs. This is a surgery I did. Uh, child was uh, less than a month. Very very dense corneal edema. Trab and trab was done. Obviously, goniotomy is not possible. Uh, but uh, at four weeks. Only the peripheral cornea has cleared. How long do you wait for the cornea to clear? I, I'll say uh, four to six weeks uh, time uh, one should wait. And um, if it is showing signs of improvement with uh, time, and that examination can be done in outpatient also. And uh, uh, one can uh, wait, uh, I think, uh, two to three months, not more than that. And, uh, and the question when... I, uh, it leads to that the keratoplasty may be required because the cornea is not clearing. A decision has to be taken in right time because once the dense amblyopia set in, uh, you know, uh, excellent uh, uh, keratoplasty or corneal grafting operation may not yield that uh, good result. Hmm. No, well, uh, when you're operating in the first week of life, second week of life, obviously you do have a little time on your hands. A child will not even focus, uh, you know, look at the mom's face and smile until it's, you know, at least six weeks to, to two months. So, uh, but, you know, as a ballpark figure, how long uh, should we be waiting? And because pediatric keratoplasty is another murky uh uh, you know, pr problem. Uh, a, a pediatric corneas fail quite a bit. Yes. The pediatric and, uh, um, penetrating keratoplasty in children is an extremely difficult uh, surgery, particularly when you are operating on few months to say one year, two year, three year old child. The post-operative, uh, the decision-making process, the surgical technique, the follow-up, and the management has to be done by an expert. We are very fortunate uh, here in LB Prasad. Uh, uh, most of my cases, uh, a job now is to be done by Dr. Murlidhar, who is concentrating on pediatric grafting and pediatric corneal disease. And uh, we uh, used to do uh, together, we used to uh, see patients together, we used to uh, do when post-PK uh, uh, examination is done, uh, we used to uh, do 
um, and uh, plan the management accordingly. Right. Um, would you would you also recommend same trabeculotomy with trabeculectomy in uh, you know developmental glaucomas or glaucomas associated with childhood where there is increased uh, uh, episcleral venous pressure? Does it make sense? Yeah, say in Stardweber syndrome or episcleral venous pressure, I have done, I have published also, and uh, I am uh, collating a, a larger series on that. And uh, it's, a, it's a good technique. The question is chances of complications, particularly in the early phase of your career, maybe a maybe little more. You'll have to be very proficient in surgery, Combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy in Sturgeover syndrome in newborn baby or within a month or two is not very difficult. The moment surgery is delayed because of the delayed presentation, because of the neglected case uh, coming from the periphery where in spite of surgical uh, advice may not have got the uh, surgery done and you are doing surgery when the pressure is very high and uh, if associated with choroidal hemangioma, chances of intraoperative complications are very high. One has to really evaluate the child and plan accordingly. And in that yeah. case, what, what I'm asking, what I'm really asking here is, in a raised episcleral venous pressure, the Schlem's canal is actually collapsed. So how is it possible to do a trabeculotomy and does it actually work when, when uh, it is likely to, to stay, stay collapsed? No, not really. I don't believe uh, that it will be collapsed. In fact, in Stardewer syndrome, there may be blood influx into the Slim's canal and in, on gonioscopy, you can really see. So the chances of bleeding are more uh, in the uh, form of hyphema or even otherwise while dissecting the scleral flap and uh, doing the procedure. The procedure is uh, relatively more difficult but it's not uh, really impossible. It, it is possible. And I am doing for my trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy in this situation. Okay. The reason I am doing that, that uh, the moment you are doing only goniotomy, you are taking care part of the problem. Uh, Gonio anomaly related to Sturgeover syndrome. But the greater problem... Mm, no, 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 no. Please don't get me wrong. I am not advocating Gonya to me here at all. I'm just yeah, I asking, think Vanita, we are getting over the heads. The, I think these are very complicated matters. We can discuss mm -hmm. them personal level. No, it's not complicated. It's about understanding the anatomy and the physiology that if episcleral venous pressure is high, then obviously Schlem's canal is collapsed. As a result of which entering, doing a trabeculotomy becomes, can become a, a serious issue. Anyway, we leave that aside. One definite question from the postgraduate's point of view is, uh, we've actually not had a, 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 an idea about what a normal IOP will be considered as a, for a child. Yes, very important question. Normal intraocular pressure in the newborn baby should be in the range of uh, um, 10 to 12, 16 uh, uh, millimeter. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, you know, Ramanjit Siota published a, uh, her paper in uh, Pediatric Ophthalmology and Stabismus from India. And uh, long ago, in uh, mid-70s, AGO published uh, intraocular pressure in newborn babies without glaucoma. It's in the range of uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16. And the moment it is nearing 20 or late teen, it is a uh, indication of an abnormal intraocular pressure. Mm -hmm. so that is what I wanted the, uh, the postgraduate trainees to understand that 20 can be abnormal uh, in, uh, in a child. In, yeah. in an adult, yes, it may still cause glaucoma, uh, normal pressure glaucoma, but in a child that is high pressure. Right. right. At this At point, most, again, I invite one, Dr. One, one important thing, Barita. Mm. Now, that is the reason in newborn glaucoma or infantile onset glaucoma, in all our publication, we set the success criteria when intraocular pressure is 16 or below without any anti-glaucoma medication. The moment it is crossing 16, according to my judgment, it is going towards, uh, you know, 
this situation where requirement for supplementation with topical anti glaucoma medication will come and in the long run patient may require uh, multiple medication and may be repeat surgery but the uh, the um, age the in the pediatric age group you know yes. it is very wide yes. what is normal and what is abnormal yes. can change every year yes. okay at this point i invite dr harsh and dr pradeep again if they want to make any comments no i think thank you very much vanita <laughs> i think she you have clarified most of the important points for the post graduates just another part is that the disc actually the cupping actually reverses in children very yes yes school. so i think they must know that fact that uh, prateep please go ahead the, you know amongst the glaucoma this is the most difficult glaucoma to manage and uh, uh, dr mandal has covered most of the things but remember one thing you know unlike cataract congenital cataract where you can delay the surgery for two three months uh, in the congenital glaucoma you cannot delay the surgery and uh, like the congenital cataract the congenital glaucoma also the unilateral is very difficult to treat because it's not only to control the intraocular pressure but to restore the vision and to treat the amblyopia in a unilateral cases is a very very difficult task in children so yeah definitely that point is uh, well made that uh, in congenital glaucoma they may the, the child may have several procedures through their life to to control pressure and, uh, uh, and every it may not be surgery, the last yeah, yeah. in every surgery has its own life and dr mandal said that you know the 10 year success rate is uh, around 60% so these patients they have a very high longevity So they would require multiple surgery, and the second surgery would not have, uh, you know, the life of uh, another ten years. So that also you should be prepared. Because he has done the follow up for thirty years. I don't know in how many patient he might have done two, three, four surgeries. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, multiple multiple uh, patient required multiple surgery, and in difficult situation, <clears throat> sometimes ultimately transcleral psychopotocoagulation, uh, etc., was required. just palliative treatment control the pressure and uh, one important thing when you are operating on a child of newborn glaucoma in the later part of your um, uh, you know life professional life the children will live uh, 70 80 90 years and an average uh, surgical uh, i'll say professional life span is about 30 35 maybe not more than that probably but at least as from surgical point of view so you will have to train people for the next generation to be uh, ready to take care of the thing and on an average and a newborn glaucoma once operated probably require three generations of surgeons to manage them their glaucoma in their lifetime yeah that just puts it into perspective <laughs> yes. well i think on that note we shall close our session today thank you so much dr mandal for your time for your effort for sharing all your experience i thank our chair and co-chair and i thank uh, the others behind the scenes who work tirelessly to bring this program and we are extremely apologetic that today the connection uh, was a little bit uh, troublesome through the presentation but i think you got the gist of it next week we have uh, sorry next friday uh, this week we have uh, the other developmental glaucomas brought to uh, you by dr shishmita koshik from pgi chandigarh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.